Good morning. Today we interrupt our normal CSI broadcast to bring you some breaking news on the current lockdown situation. This past week has seen a number of disturbing reports from parents struggling to educate their children at home. Children are being disruptive in classes, they've been picking on their teachers, their parents, and not wanting to get cleverer by learning to speak good England. The clip we're about to show you, I have to warn you, is quite disturbing. Dave, not his real name, censors this clip from his home in the Midlands, not his real home, and any people that you may think you recognise in this clip is purely coincidental. Hey CSI, um, I'm just sending you this message, I'm just, I don't know, I'm just so desperate. I really need your help. We've been watching your channel. We've been really impressed with the stuff going on and um, I'm just finding it so hard. You know, it's week six in lockdown, trying to keep my kids uh, happy and entertained, but also trying to keep them educated. And they're just constantly moaning, uh, me and my wife, and uh, just, you know, this whole thing with schoolwork and, and things like that. And I just thought, you know what, maybe you guys can help. Maybe you can help them to see uh, the value of just having the freedom to be at home. Um, uh, to be educated and to, to have the opportunity to learn and things and I'm just I'm really desperate I really need your help um, please see what you can do when you get this message I'll show you uh, the kids now hey guys how are we doing it's been working outside how's your school work going I don't get it what? how do we have to do this what, what don't you get that I mean it's, it's just one plus three I thought we were doing your simple maths no I just don't get Why it why do you have to do this do well it's only really simple. You're only doing a bit each day, and it's really important to learn. It's not working. What, what's not working? You just have to Get press OK it. on that. Don't. Why do you well, have to do this? Why? Because it, because you need to learn. Well, just but press the. Why? Can you press the? Why? But, uh, they need to give us work that we can understand. Well, it, it's. I thought it was simple. Well, why don't you go back to one plus two? That might. Well, that's quite shocking stuff. If they were my kids, I'd punish them. We sent a crack reporter, Dave, to investigate the value that education brings and why it is so important to be thankful for what we have compared to how things used to be in years gone by. Here's what Dave found. Good morning, Mr. Rakes. Thank you for taking the time to speak to us. I'm not sure how I am speaking to you. Well, we have a special camera it lets us see right through into the past. A, a camera? They're just inventing them now, surely. What, what a remarkable world we live in. Yes, and we know that you've always been a great believer. A great believer, yes. Jesus is my dear friend, and with his help, I have been able to help others. <laughs> yes. I was going to say a great believer in learning and education, but you say you are also a Christian. Oh yes, my boy. And it's these two things that have been my passion over the years. I was wondering why someone with great uh, wealth would want to spend it on others in such difficult times. Well, my family was very blessed. I came from money. Uh, my father built up the paper, the, the Gloucester Journal, as you may know, and handed the business to me. Well, surely running a huge newspaper was a full-time job. There'd be no room for helping others. Why would you make that effort? I don't know what life is like for you, young lad, but we're going through some difficult times at the moment. We have great industry and, and new technology, yet little of it is used to help those at the lowest end. Now we know that you were able to change that though. What did you do to get the government to step in and make things better? I'm a great believer in the written word, in learning, in being educated. Young children growing up in the future. But what future is it if they're going to be ignorant and disruptive? Were the children not educated at all? Only those with money to pay for it privately, very sadly. Everyone else is forced into a life of hard, manual work. Imagine getting up very early every day, having very little to eat,
working hard for hours, hardly time to rest, before, well, going to bed exhausted, only to do it all again the next day. For most of them, it's a hard life, leading to an early death. Some live longer than 36, but not a lot. Well, that's awful. Yes, it is. I set up a school for children, for free. It started on Sundays, as this was the only day that they had off from work. In the mornings, we would teach them reading and writing. In the afternoons, we would learn about my friend Jesus from the Bible. It became a Sunday school. And the children came. They came all by themselves. Yes, it was so much better than work in the week and better than getting into trouble on the Sunday. They wanted to learn so that they could get a better job and have a better and longer life. It also meant that they could learn about Jesus and his love for them. Wow, what a difference that must have made. How did this change things for the whole country though? Well, I used my newspaper to tell everyone about the school. Soon, more and more children were coming, so more schools were getting set up. More children came, so more schools were set up. Soon, it was everywhere. And that's how the government found out about it. Yes, they saw the value of educating children so that they could do better things in the country. They decided that children should go to school Monday to Friday and learn to read and write. And the Sunday school? Well, the children enjoyed it so much, they just kept coming. I'm just so pleased to hear this. Sunday schools are now found in most churches all around the world, thanks to you and those who set them up to start with. Well, I didn't start this movement, my boy. Jesus did. In the Old Testament, God told Moses that all the family should know the word of God. Deuteronomy 31, God tells Moses and he said, bring the, the mothers and the children and, and let them hear the word of God that they may know the law of the Lord. Jesus told his disciples, let the little children come to me and do not hinder them for the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. You are so right. Thank you for sharing with us today. I'm so thankful for people like you and for what you have done. Don't thank me. Jesus is the reason I do these things. He wants people to treat other people fairly and with love and respect. Well, I'm sure the children who will be watching this today will perhaps be so much more thankful that they have the opportunity to be freely educated. Yes. They should never complain about having classes to read and write. I think they will realise what a privilege their education is. Well, thank you once again and goodbye. Well, thanks Dave for that informative piece, as ever, hitting the nail on the head. It's amazing, isn't it? The things that we can take for granted today, our education, the opportunity to learn, to study, to go to university, to have the opportunity to get a good job and provide for one's household. An opportunity that perhaps missed so many children in years gone by. They did not have that luxury. It was work hard and die young. But thanks to people like Mr. Robert Rakes, a influential anthropologist, a man with money and the ability to use it for good, could turn things around, could create an environment that is free and safe for children to go to, to learn, so they wouldn't have to grow up in the coal mines and up the chimneys and working in the streets. They could learn, they could be educated, they could get themselves a job, a good job that was safe, probably giving them a longer life and a happier life. There are many things that we can take for granted today, like our education system not wanting to do school, not wanting to learn. But you know, it's a valuable thing that's been given to us at such a high price. And we can be thankful for Christians such as Robert Rakes, 
who have gone before us, who saw the poverty and the need to change it, who, because of him, we have our Sunday schools and the education that we know today. Sunday schools that are still going on in our church, in churches all over the world, and an education system that many countries enjoy, where children can go in a safe environment and learn and have a different life. Well, I think that concludes our CSI for today. We will resume our normal broadcasting and our investigations next week. Until then, stay safe and goodbye. Thank <laughs> you.